Welcome to part 18 of my DIY backyard project. If you have missed the previous progress, check them out in the description. If you are planning to build a deck by yourself or even hiring a contractor to do the job, I hope you will find this helpful. And my goal is to inspire more people into DIY. This time, we are talking about charcoal grill on a PVC deck. Sounds dangerous, isn't it? Let's drop a piece of hot charcoal on the AZEC PVC board, and guess what will happen? I will dedicate the next video to talk about barbecue grill mat. Okay, let's get started. In this project, we are building a fireproof barbecue station. There are a couple of points I want to share with you. To make it fireproof, I am using exterior-grade porcelain tiles, and I will show you the installation steps. Because it's exposed to outdoor, extreme temperature will cause the wooden frame to expand and contract, which can cause the tiles and grout to crack. I will share my tips to prevent this from happening. I did this project last year, but I did not publish this video until summertime this year because I want to make sure there is no cracking on the tiles or grout after the winter. Now, you have confidence to follow what I did. Remember my 3D rendering? That's my barbecue station at the right hand corner. I am sticking to my design and started to lay out the frame using 2x4s. Now, it's time to attach the frame using deck screws. As a good practice, you always want to pre-drill for good quality to prevent the wood from splitting. Then, you drive it in using the impact drill at 45 degrees. Next, I am using some ASEC PVC scrap boards to make some spacers. This is very important for airflow and drainage. You don't want the bottom of your barbecue station to rot. It was raining the night before. Now, see how it looks. I think you would agree this helps a lot to prevent rotting. This method is good if you want to add the barbecue station to your existing deck. There is another way to do this if you have better planning at the stage of framing. You basically don't want to install the deck boards underneath the barbecue station. Then you can build the whole structure directly on the joist. Certainly there was room for improvement. I had to rewire one LED light, it's not too difficult. I should not have to do this if I have a bad plan. Anyways, if you have done a good job from day one you started the project, everything should be leveled. We are adding more 2x4s to make it look like a barbecue station. The framing part is boring. Let's talk about the Chaco Grill. I bought this Master Forge barbecue grill from Lowe's seven years ago. It was such a wonderful grill. I actually did some modification so I could use it as a smoker. I did not have any video at that time. Check out my blog if you are interested. I will post the link in the description. In order for it to fit onto the barbecue station, I had to get rid of the side tables and the legs. As you can see, there are some rust here and there, but it's okay, because it will be such a waste if we throw this away. Although we don't need the legs, but we do need to make a stand. I am cutting off a small section of the metal using a hacksaw. To prevent rusting, I am using this aluminum angle bar I got it from the local hardware store.
Remember the section we cut it off? We need to apply some rust paint. Because it's such a tiny job, I did not even want to use a brush. Just use some cheesecloth or paper towel would do the job. Wait for it to dry overnight and we can install the aluminum angle bar. The most effective way to secure these two pieces of metal together is to use the aluminum pop rivet. For many of you serious DIY people, you may have this in your toolbox. The base is almost done. Aluminum is very thin. We need to do some brazing at 45 degrees angle at the corners. To do this, we cut about one and a half inches in the middle of this angle bars. We got rid of one side. With the other side hanging, use the hacksaw to mark a line there, but don't cut it. Now, use your thumb to press on it and make a 45 degrees angle. I think you got the idea. Now, all the corners are completed. The base is rock solid. Let's take a look if everything looks good. Wow, that looks fantastic. Okay, it's time to go back to work on the frame. Same as the aluminum base, I am cutting some wood for the corners. That's good for reinforcement. Pre-drill it and secure it using the impact driver. One thing I forgot to tell you, I was doing the framing in the garage because I don't have to worry about the weather. Building the rest of the barbecue station is pretty straightforward. The quick grip is a very useful tool I strongly recommend. As you can see here, it helps a lot. If you have a good measuring tape and a good miter saw, you should be able to get a tight fit like this every single time. That's the DIY quality I'm talking about. Now, it's getting into shape. Honestly, barbecue station is not too critical. There is no building code to follow on the framing part. Just use your common sense. If you have done tiles inside of your house before, you know the subfloor is either plywood or OSB. Now you have a question. Do I need half an inch or three-quarter plywood? For anything you need to walk on it, you need three-quarter. However, for barbecue station, there is no traffic and half an inch is more than enough. Forget about OSB, by the way. At your local hardware store, there are two types of plywood, interior grade and exterior. Unfortunately for this project, you do need exterior. Just another DIY tips for those who got a small pickup truck like I do. You don't need any cable tied down for the 4x6 plywood. All you need is this ratcheting cargo bar. It's pretty safe even you go on the highway. Of course, you can leave the tailgate opened and have it flat on the bed. Now it's time to cut the plywood. Before doing that, there is another tool I want to share with you. I got it from Princess Auto. It's a 48 inches clamp and cutting guide. It's pretty good when this was on sale. I only paid 12 bucks for it. I will post the link in the description. Let's do some testing. I think the frame is pretty solid as you can see. I needed to do the overhang on the edges, so it will look like a countertop when it's finished. That's why I needed to do the border like that.
drive a lot of deck screws to secure it. You don't want it to move at all. That's the last piece of plywood I have to install, and this part is completed. Something I forgot to tell you, you need to leave one eighth of an inch gap for the plywood to expand. Yes, for all the plywood. It is very, very important. If you don't do this, the chance of having the tiles or grout to crack is much higher. At this point, all the woodworking parts are completed. It's time to transport this to the backyard. Now, this is what I needed. A heavy-duty hand truck which supports up to a thousand pounds. I got this from Princess Auto when it was on sale. It's made in USA, not those made in China crap. I will post the link in the description if you're interested. I am not affiliated with the manufacturer or Princess Auto. I just want to help you guys. This is pretty common sense. You don't want to scratch the AZAC PVC boards. To reduce friction, all you need is cardboard. It does the trick. It's pretty solid. Even I stand on it, there is no vibration or anything. In the meantime, I am roasting some coffee beans. At this point, you cannot install the tiles directly on the plywood. You either need Deidre or cement board. I am using cement board for this project. The next question is, do I need a quarter inch or half an inch board? Similar to the plywood question, if you are installing a flooring project, you do need at least half an inch. But for the barbecue station, no one is walking on it. So, a quarter inch is more than enough. For the thin set bonding to the cement board to the plywood, I am using Marpate Ultraflex LFT. Honestly, any polymer modified thin set will do. Make sure to don't use unmodified. I just got some leftover from the previous tile project. I am using this product called Wonder Board. Following the installation instructions, we need to use one and a quarter inch backboard screws on every six inches. Yes, that's a lot of screws. Again, one eighth of an inch gap is needed. I did not make this up. Read the installation instructions. Life is not perfect. You can use the angle grinder to fix it. The next step is to install the backboard mesh tape. Don't use the fiberglass tape for drywall. You need the right product for the right job. The thin set will destroy the drywall tape. Don't use that. There is another secret weapon. I am using it to prevent the tiles and grout from cracking. The product is called Aqua Defense from Mape. It's a paintable isolation membrane. I can tell you this worked because about six years ago when I did my front porch, I used this product and there was no cracking whatsoever. If you're interested in that project, check out my blog. I did not have any video at that time. I will post the link in the description.
Painting is easy. I don't have to explain much. After first coat is dried, you need to apply second coat. I think it looks good. Next, I am using the AZAC PVC fascia boards to wrap around the barbecue station. For the installation, I leave 1 8 of an inch gap horizontally for ventilation. That's very important for airflow. From time to time, you may want to check for leveling to ensure you have done a good job. Remember in the beginning of this video, I had to rewire the LED cable because the barbecue station was sitting on it. Now, it's not a bad idea to relocate the LED light over here. Sometimes you have to be creative. I actually ran out of PVC board at the back. And that's why I am doing a two-tone color. But only my neighbors can see it, so that's fine. Finally, we are getting into porcelain tiles. When your wife is showing off her Gucci or Fenty designer bags, here's what to tell your friends. That's made in Italy porcelain tiles on my freaking barbecue station. Yes, it is designed for exterior. And it's Italiano. It's made by a company called Domus Nene. Can't go wrong with that. You may want to ask, do I really need exterior grade porcelain tiles or any porcelain tiles will do? That's a very good question. I actually don't have an answer for that. But since I don't want this project to fail, I am using the best material that I could find. I spent around $150 Canadian on the tiles. It's not too bad at all. Here, I am using another thin set because I ran out of the Mape LFT. This thin set is designed for porcelain tiles. It's exterior rated. Same as before, it's very important to use polymer modified thin set. Now, you may want to ask, what is the difference between polymer modified and unmodified thin set? I am not going to discuss this right now, but I will talk about it when I use Ditra in the future. I started to work on the edges because this is tricky. You need the support for the tiles, otherwise it will slide down to the ground due to gravity. I am using the scrap boards for support. But in order to make it perfectly leveled, I am picking up pieces of black mulch from my garden and shimp it. That's the DIY tips of the day. As a good practice, especially for DIY people, always back butter every single tiles to ensure good coverage of the thin set. For DIY job, we have unlimited time, why not? I got some black mulch here. I am showing you again in details on how to shimp the tiles to make it level. As you can see, it's not level right now. All you have to do is to insert that piece of mulch here. Boom, it's leveled. Time to take a break. Rum and coke is the way to go. It's getting there, it looks fantastic, but wait, we have not done grouting yet. Here is another secret I want to share with you to prevent the grout from cracking. For those of you using Mape Caracalla S, you do not mix this with water. You want to buy this expensive bottle of additive called Grout Maximizer. Just follow what I did and your grout will not crack. Empty the bottle into the bucket and pour the whole bag of grout in there. Then you can start mixing. There are a lot of bad reviews about this product. Honestly, I don't understand why. I have used this product many times and I don't have any issues. A lot of people don't read the instructions properly. My recommendation is always RTFM. I do it all the time. 
The other mistake people might have made is that they pick up the wrong product for their growth. There are two versions, sanded and unsanded. You may want to ask, how does this product prevent the growth from cracking? Go to the MAPE website and download the PDF. It talks about the additive compared to mixing with water. Look at the percentage of shrinkage and water absorption. If it doesn't convince you, I don't know what can. Enough technical details. Let's go back to finish the project. This looks pretty good. For this project, I intentionally did not use any edging because raw edges look good. Especially, it shows made in Italy here. Finally, I can secure the whole structure to the deck using Faster Master Headlock 4.5 inches screws to the joist. Of course, you can use GRK RSS. This is how it looks with the Master Forge charcoal grill. That looks awesome, isn't it? To protect it from rain and snow, I bought this barbecue cover from the local hardware store. That was a big mistake. It made a perfect home for the raccoon. Yes, there's a raccoon here. I think the raccoon like my backyard. Look, it's on the bridge. To solve this problem, I am cutting off this handle because it's sticking out too much and it gave some space for the raccoon to climb up. Then, I got another barbecue cover from Amazon. I made additional holes at the bottom so I can use zip ties to secure it. Problem solved, no more raccoons. This cover looks a lot better than before as I can showcase the made in Italy tiles. Finally, I can enjoy the barbecue. Next time, we will put the tiles to the test and I will talk about how you can protect the front part of your grill in case you drop a hot charcoal on your ASAC PVC deck. This is a long video because there is a lot of information I want to share with you. I hope you enjoy it. Give this a thumbs up if you like it. My goal again is to inspire more people into DIY. You may want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.